what do small business and doctors make of the latest developments on health care reform now that a formal vote won't happen until fall at the earliest? Let's ask Dr. Kent Holtorf of the Holtorf Medical Group. His practice no longer takes health insurance. And we're also joined by Brian England, owner of Maryland-based British American Auto Care. Brian, I want to actually begin, excuse me, Doug, I actually want to begin with you because basically, you know, your, your company you have to, you're, I'm so sorry, but you have to offer uh, health insurance to folks, but can you afford to still offer health insurance to folks? It gets more and more difficult to afford to pay health insurance, and each year it's a challenge. We start working it out probably in February or March and spend a long time trying to look at the best way to keep the cost down. But the cost came this year, our PPO went up 9% and our HMO went up uh, 12%. And that's a big chunk of money. And what made it worse was, um, or potentially could have made it worse, was if we'd had different uh, staff and if, if we'd employed someone that was older, that can make another dramatic difference. In fact, we lost someone that was 60 years old. And that, if that, that person hadn't left, our rates would have gone on an additional 20%. So it's a very serious problem. Okay, and, and Brian, I'm actually, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to say, to say Doug, but Brian, I meant to send that question to you as well, because you are struggling uh, with your, with your, uh, with your health care issues, and at the same time, you've got a, you, you're looking at a potential surtax on your business of anywhere from 2 to 8%. Well, we're not going to have a surtax on our business because we're already paying. I think the businesses that are not paying are going to have a surtax. I don't think we are. In fact, you know, if everybody has health insurance, it's going to be the other way around. And we've got the, you know, the proof is, is there because over the last 12 or 15 years when nothing's been done, our insurance has gone up you know, triple or quadruple probably the um, cost. Okay. So we, we need to do something, you know, otherwise we're going to get taxed by circumstance. Okay, doctor, let me take it over to you, Dr. Holtorf. So uh, you, you're, you no longer are taking insurance for folks. Why did you make that decision? Well, really, insurance doesn't work for uh, care that you need to you think you're going to use on a routine basis. It's for emergencies. And, and what's happening with health care is basically patients, they pay their premium that, or it's paid for. So they just want to get everything they can. You get the doctors who basically just want to uh, uh, bill as much as they can or see as many patients as they can. Then you have the insurance company trying to deny everything. So no one's working together. Costs are increasing and care is just declining. So really, we went back and we're working for the patient. We work for the patient. Not the, uh, n not, not the insurance company. You know, doctors are now no longer doctors. They're providers. They work for the insurance company. We work for the, for the uh, patient. Doctor, I mean, what do you make of Obamacare? I mean, do you agree with the president's uh, plan here and what's happening with the House right now? Do you agree with the plan as is, or do you think that they're missing something? Well, I, I think it's going to be, in a word, a disaster. I mean, they've taken the worst part of the system, again, the insurance reimbursement system, and just expanding that. Then you add the fraud and the waste um, and the corruption that's really associated with a government-run plan, and it's just going to, costs are going to spiral out of control, and care is just going to decline tremendously. All right, Brian, let me ask you something. You have an interesting perspective because you, of course, came over uh, to this country from Europe. Uh, you've had experience with basically government-run health care. Do you fear that we're going in, the, in that direction in this country? No, I don't. I think it's a completely different situation. And, you know, our country has a lot of great health um, care. And I think we should be modeling ourselves more on France or Germany or Taiwan rather than looking to England. I mean, they've got their system. We need an American system. All right. Uh, Dr. Holtor, if, do you believe under the, the president's plan, under the House plan, do you believe that it's possible to cover 97 percent uh, of Americans and give them health care and not bankrupt the system? No, absolutely not. Again, there's no incentive to cut costs. In our practice, um, for instance, we've got, we got an example here to cut costs. We have a patient came in, uh, to, did 21 labs. Uh, we negotiated with the lab uh, down to $285. Patient said, I got great insurance. Let's bill the insurance. Okay, they bill the insurance $1,200. The insurance pays $800. Now the patient's charged $400. And she said, oh, great. Thank God I had insurance. But you could have got it for much less. Same thing we do heart scans that, um, 
they basically to, to detect early heart disease. Um, the uh, the uh, scans uh, basically they charge the insurance about uh, three thousand dollars. They bill the um, uh, and then the insurance pays about two thousand, and they bill the patient the rest. We negotiate down to three hundred dollars. People, all these places will take um, much less for cash. The system has so much waste in it, just going back and forth trying to get uh, paid by these insurance companies. And they've just expanded the worst part of the system, and the care is going to be horrible. Just rationing of care and all the money going to bureaucracy and really waste. Dr. Holtorf, we're going to have to leave it there. Brian England as well. Gentlemen, thank you for appearing on Fox Business.